This here principally illustrates the isochron plot of a long-lived decay system. Now, long-lived means that the half-life of such a decay system is longer than about a hundred millions of years. Here is shown the decay system rubidium-87 decays to strontium-87 with a half-life of 48.1 billions of years, so clearly a long-lived system. Now, an isochron plot is structured as follows. On the x-axis is the parent nuclide, which in this case is rubidium-87. And on the y-axis is the daughter nuclide, which in this case is strontium-87. Now, isotopes are always reported as ratios, so we need a normalizing isotope here, which in this case is strontium-86, which is used, of course, for both axes here. Now, if you want to produce an isochron, we need a rock that contains components that have um, various concentrations of the parent nuclide or the ratio of the parent to daughter nuclide, so of the rubidium strontium ratio. In this case, this could be, for example, with a high rubidium strontium ratio, might be something maybe feldspar or so, and with a low ratio, could be something like olivine pyroxene, something like this. It doesn't really matter for the overall structure of the, of the plot here, and depends, of course, on the rock. So there are components with high rubidium strontium and low rubidium strontium. Now let's start with the component with the high rubidium strontium. And if I say high rubidium, um, if there's a lot of rubidium, it automatically means there's a lot of rubidium-87. So there's a compound with a lot of rubidium or high rubidium strontium, and this is this one here. So if the rubidium starts to decay, the uh, composition of this compound moves into this direction here, so towards lower rubidium concentrations. At the same time, strontium-87 is produced, so the composition always moves into this direction here. So that after some time, there's a, um, an overall um, change in composition into, well, to the left and up, so into this direction here. Now let's look at a second component with less rubidium, but at the same time interval. So this, it, took a, it took a certain time for, for this component to move up into this direction here. Let's look at the, at the second component. And in the same time, because it has less rubidium, um, fewer rubidium will decay. So the, the move, uh, so the change in composition is a bit smaller. And of course, as well, the amount of strontium-87 that is produced will also be a little bit smaller, so it will go something like this. And the overall um, change will be something like that. And then we can look at that. At the third, um, component and of course the amount of rubidium that will be decay will all even be smaller and the amount of strontium that will be produced will also be smaller and the overall direction will be something like this. Or if you look at, um, at a longer time then um, after a certain amount of time this amount of strontium will be produced, this amount of rubidium will be decayed and the overall um, change in composition will be this, and the first component will reach this, um, this point here. And in the same time, in the second component, less rubidium decays and less strontium is produced, so that overall this point here will be reached, or the, the composition will change towards this composition, and in the third component, the composition will change towards this composition here. And the same for the bulk and the fourth component and so on. And importantly, so after a certain time, we get a number of new compositions in these components here that all plot on one single line. And because this line represents the composition after the same time, it is an isochron. So it's a composition at the same time um, that elapsed since, well, uh, since the initial composition, basically. And this is how this isochron um, evolves here. So initially the isochron will be something like this, it will be something like that, and so on. So it will move into this direction to, uh, along these initially blue lines here. 
Now importantly, the isochron plot is a parameter plot. And the parameter in this case is the, the time. And uh, for the x-axis and for the y-axis, you have two different equations to describe the change in their composition. So for the x-axis, the, um, the equation will be e to minus lambda times t. And for the y-axis, the equation be, will be 1 minus e to minus lambda t. So these are two different equations, parameter in both cases is the same. But if you want to describe this uh, later mathematically, we need these two equations here. Um, and, and we have then one parameter describing this direction, the other parameter describing this direction. And importantly, the overall direction is, is um, towards well, right and up. So this is how the isochron plot is generally structured. And of course, the slope here of the isochron can then um, give us the, the age of the rock. But here, all that is important is how the isochron plot in general is structured, that it is a parameter plot, that this kind of isochron is produced, and from this we can then um, deduce an age.